So then, over to you, Damini. So welcome, everyone. My name is Damini Modasia. I'm the co-founder of Global Youth Forum. And thank you for creating time to join today's session, for registering and joining, making time to join. So I'll just, because I come from Kenya, Mombasa in specific, I'll just give you some facts in regards to the education system and the job unemployment rate in Kenya. So in Kenya, 3.5% of the country's population have university degrees. So they've graduated and they have those degrees, but the youth unemployment rate still remains at 7.17%. There are like 5,341,182 out of 13,777,600 young, young Kenyans who are jobless. So you can see that gap that we need to fill. And this clearly indicates that the Kenyan education system, personally, the one I have gone through needs a lot of working and they need to give the young people or the students, the ones who are in college and universities, the life skills that are going to help them either create their own job or get their own job. And that's one of Global Youth Forum aim as well. So then if you're wondering why we conducted or why we organized this event, the Student for SDGs debate program today, then we, one of our representatives of Global Youth Forum earlier this month uh, conducted, as, uh, interviewed some students in a rural village and they got some cool answers in regards to what SDG stands for. Some of them said SDG stands for smart digital girls. Some said it's severe degrading gender. So you can see clearly that these students do not know what SDG really is. So the aim of this debate is basically to uh, make the students understand, make everyone, this, the young people understand what SDG is and how the education system, not only in my country, Kenya, but wherever, because we are a diverse group, so wherever you are, how the education system can contribute towards the realization of the sustainable development goals. So I look forward to engaging more in today's debate and hearing uh, how education system is, because I can see we have people from India, we have from Uganda, we have from Ghana. So I look forward to hearing from all of you. So welcome everyone. And uh, thank you, Peter. Thanks so much, Damini, for, uh, for those facts and uh, statistics. They mean a lot. So can everyone see my screen? Just nod or just give me a yes. Can you guys see that? What can you see on my screen, Damini? There's a poster for the event. OK. So for you who have made it right here, thank you for creating time and for joining. And to our partners in the house, Slick Girls, First Tray, Jawabu for Community, Royalty Dishes, and Youth Adventures, we recognize your presence. And thank you for joining us to support. So just a quick run through the program. I know some of you might be wondering what Global Youth Forum is all about. I mean, you might have missed that. Our aim is to help young people either create a job or get a job. And to do this, they need some skills to do those two, uh, those two things that I've, I've just mentioned. So that's purely about our aim uh, in terms of uh, helping eradicate or, or reduce the youth unemployment gap. So we've just done a bit of networking, although we didn't have much time, but thank you for those who joined in a little bit early to introduce yourselves and just to share much with us. The opening remarks, Damini just gave us some good statistics and, and I know each and every county have their own statistics. So again, thank you, Damini, for that. Then we will have a presentation from um, our advisor, that's Nava, all the way from Singapore, talking to us about the sustainable development goals. Then we will head to the debate where you guys will share your opinions and uh, just talk about this topic for today. And then from the debate, uh, each member from each group will come and just tell us what you got from the debate. And then we'll have our second presenter coming to share with us about how students or young people can link their careers to the SDGs. And then we got our advice again, Shiv, who came in early. He must have shared a bit about himself to talk to us about giants versus titans and how the platform can be used to uh, create awareness on the SDGs. And this is the most exciting part, the Q&A and the feedback. 
you've got to tell us probably why, what you liked, what you didn't like, and how we can improve. And then the partners will jump in to share with us their experiences. And obviously, when we were setting this event, we had some targets to, to just get us going. So purely, purely that's the, uh, the program. And we, we look to hear more from your end. If you can't probably unmute or unmute, you can always use the chat. And if you are not talking, sometimes you can always just stay mute. So with that, I think I got some two guests. I might just want to invite them to just have uh, 30 seconds to tell us a bit about themselves. So I will start with, I will, I will start with Shiv to just tell us a bit about himself in 30 seconds and then Nava also, and then uh, our first speaker will jump on to share with us about, uh, about the topic of the day that is SDGs and what we are looking to do. So. Um, let me jump and start with Nava. Nava, you might want to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about yourself. Thank you. Shiva, I'm coming to you in a second, sorry. <laughs> Hi, so I'm Nava, I'm from Singapore. I'm a community builder and a business consultant. I primarily work with the three Ps, the people, public and private sectors. And um, I'm very passionate about the SDGs. I believe in the intersectionality of our issues, but also our solutions. And I'll be sharing a little bit more about that in, our, in the presentation later on. Thank you so much, uh, Nava, and uh, for joining us to talk to us about uh, uh, what you do and just to highlight and enlighten us on the SDGs. Shiv, I'm jumping over to you. Thank you for, for your patience. Welcome. Uh, yeah, hi, Shiv here from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I'm a chemical engineer by a degree, uh, but after 12 years practicing what I had learned uh, in a multinational here in Malaysia, I, UK, and in US, I then started my own firm, First Ray, to engage uh, using digital games to create awareness, bring teams together. So I've had a whole lot of fun this past 25 years doing things, and now I'm looking forward to working with uh, Peter and the Global Youth Foundation, a uh, Global Youth Forum, to bring awareness for a better planet. Thank you. So thanks so much Shiv, for that uh, wonderful introduction. And the world has, has totally changed. So you can see somebody can be in, in Kuala Lumpur, somebody can be in Singapore, somebody can be in Uganda, but then we are connected. Uh, the power of the digital and the new world. So without, they say without further ado, let me take this opportunity to welcome, welcome Nava to speak to us uh, about about the SDGs, but before we jump on to that, I know some of you might be interested that what are we looking to achieve this year as Global Youth Forum? I won't, I won't stress much of this, but all I know is that you guys might have seen this somewhere, probably on the social media or somewhere. So before we started all this project, we wanted just to create awareness on all these sustainable development goals with an aim of empowering 200 young people with life skills, but I know we will do more and I know you guys can help us achieve all this. So if, if you guys can read about NAVA, uh, can you guys see what everyone has a part to play slide? Okay, good. So if you can see clearly that NAVA already has, has you started. So as we listen to what she's going to say, we want you to think about this and relate this to what she's going to talk about. So Nava, over to you. All right, thank you, Peter. So I'll be sharing my screen. Just let me um, know if you can see it. Are you able to see the presentation? Yes. All right. Okay, so any time if you are not able to see my screen, just let me know, yeah? Okay, so a little bit about myself. Earlier, I've shared that I'm a community builder and I've worked with the three Ps. I am passionate about the SDGs, primarily these three goals, uh, which involve education, climate change, and gender equality. And I also mentioned about intersectionality. So I'll be sharing a bit about that in the presentation as well. So when we talk about the SDGs, right? We have to start with the Millennium Development Goals. Now in 2000, there were eight goals that were, um, 
that were brought together and they are measurable and universally agreed objectives. And the MDG started as a global effort in 2000 to tackle the indignity of poverty, right? So they were established as a measurable and a universally agreed objective to tackle extreme poverty and hunger, preventing diseases, um, ensuring that there's greater education, especially at the primary level for children. And there were a lot of other priorities that were also set. But essentially, these were the first goals at a UN level that were time-bound. Now, the MDGs drove progress in several important areas, especially in reducing income poverty, and they provided much needed access to water sanitation, as well as driving down child mortality and improving maternal health. So those were the key goals that were achieved, right? And as a, at a global level, it also kick-started a lot of free education at a primary level, and it inspired a lot of countries to invest in future generations. Most importantly and significantly, the MDGs also made huge strides in combating a lot of treatable diseases such as HIV, malaria, and TB. However, something that we do need to note is that progress was uneven across regions and countries. And according to the 2015 Millennium Development Goals Report, the percentage of people living in extreme poverty and of under eight children did not drop as proportionately, especially in Southern Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. And so one in eight people remained hungry and 58 million people, uh, especially children, remained out of school. So this is where, you know, the SDGs then came into play, right? And they were replaced, uh, they replaced the MDGs. Now, they were born in the UN Conference of Sustainable Development in Rio in 2012. And the objective was to set a universal, a set of universal goals that meet urgent environmental, political and economic challenges facing our world. Now, they are a bold commitment to finish what we started and tackle some of the more pressing challenges facing the world today. All 17 goals interconnect, meaning the success in one affects the success for others. And this is where I mentioned about intersectionality. Um, and Sunri, so uh, SHIF has actually put together the 17 goal and they're very specific targets. And so um, I think SHIF or uh, Peter will be sharing the link for it. So do look up these targets and goals and identify what they are. So why are we in a better place to achieve the SDGs than the MDGs? First of all, there has been great improvements in technology and technology has allowed us uh, to improve in these areas of accessibility, interest and mobilization. For one, there's greater connectivity, which has enabled us to have greater access to knowledge and resources, even with everything that we see around the world where we see a lot of bad news. Historically, we're actually at a better place than we have been before. The SDGs also recognize the multidimensional nature of poverty, and they address factors that contribute to global poverty, including war and political instability, discrimination, social inequality, vulnerability to natural diseases, in disasters, the absence of rule of law and corruption and other factors. And they also in, uh, address the environmental causes of poverty. Another aspect of this is that they consider stakeholder input and gender equality to access education for women. And it's referred to, um, and the SDGs refer to a larger number of healthcare issues as well, which include the achievement of, um, of primary education. And when we look at mobilization of resources and people, the SDGs has actually garnered greater mobilization over the years. And we've also especially seen this with greater youth involvement. Uh, one such example is the Youth 2030 Agenda, which looks at ensuring that youth are at the forefront of decision-making across organizations. And we're also seeing an increase in mobilization in terms of financial resources. Now, when we look at the future, right? And we're talking about education and the economy today. Um, we have to look at a couple of different factors of what the future could look like. One is that, you know, education in terms of figures, in terms of absolute figures has gone up. Economic empowerment has also gone up. But of course, we need to ensure that the pandemic doesn't undo the progress that has been made in the last decade. Um, in terms of um, education, it cuts across all SDGs. So for any of the SDGs to be successful, education is very pivotal, whether that's in formal education or informal education, right? And we're also looking at, you know, how youth are involved in the future and youth will continue to play a critical role in championing what the future looks like in terms of your voice, in terms of mobilizing initiatives and in terms of being involved in lifelong learning. So when we look at skills for the future, especially with 
the pandemic and in, with technological advancements, we're also looking at the change in the kind of skills that people are required to have, right? And a lot of work can also include remote work. In terms of education, we're looking at self-directed and lifelong learning because learning isn't going to just start and stop in schools. They go beyond schools to homes, to organizations outside, to even places of work where there's learning and development and, and training opportunities. And so it will be very important for individuals to take ownership of our own learning and to continuously look for ways to upskill. Um, and this is where we look at three aspects to, to skills, where you look at pre-skill, upskilling, and reskilling. And there are huge implications on the labor market in these regards. In this sense, we also need to democratize training and education so that it doesn't just sit within schools, but organizations need to be involved as well. And, in, and to ensure that this is made possible, organizations need to have certain incentives to ensure that they take on the cost of, of um, investing in learning and development opportunities to keep the labor market productive, but also keeping the employees involved. To keep up with these changes, there needs to be huge political will to ensure that the investments in systems and infrastructure, right? So to, for learning to keep taking place, there needs to be technology, there needs to be schools, there needs to be uh, organizations that are able to, to ensure that the right devices and, and places are available for people. And of course, there's a lot of data that, that substantiates the fact that with diversity and inclusion, especially with women and girls being educated, there are huge implications on economic growth. So diversity has to be at the forefront of these decisions and policies. And when we look at, um, at reimagining the future, something that we need to look at is gainful employment. So it's not just about having a job, it's about having jobs that, are, that spark joy, right? Joy, uh, jobs that give joy to people. And the last part about youth, you know, how, what can we do as youth? One is that we can keep up with trends. Um, the most important thing that we can do is to learn to learn because with how fast technology is changing, we're going to have to keep learning new skills and be open to experiences, whether it's through jobs or volunteering, um, keep mobilizing and start from your own communities. And most importantly, you know, use your voice to get other decision makers to co-create the future that you want. All right. All right, back to you, Peter. Peter, unmute yourself, please. All right, we get confused with these things. So thanks so much, Damini, for the reminder. So again, I was just saying that Nava, thanks so much for the wonderful presentation. I think you guys must have picked a skill or two. Nava must have taken us where the sustainable development goals began, where we are, and what the role young people can play towards the realization of these sustainable development goals. So if something caught your eyes, now it is time we are jumping on to the debate corner. And there is where now you are going to apply all these skills. So what will happen? I got, I got a question. So probably you who is joining, um, all you will have to do is just to jump on on those on on your on the room, not on the room, in the room, and you will be discussing these particular questions. It's pretty simple. And I, when you go into the rooms, can you guys see the breakout room question? Huh? Okay, good. Yeah, we can see it. Yes, yes, Peter. Good. So now that I will send, I will open the rooms. And when you go to the rooms, you are either a yes or a no. We are not making it a no forum or like you just go into the room where you find yourself and uh, you find yourself engage on this. It will be for 15 minutes. So you will appoint a repertoire or somebody who will come back and represent your group. And Shiv will be taking notes on, on Shiv can hover around to see who, who is, how the discussion is going. Then he can come and tell us how, how he thought in terms of the, uh, the engagement. So I'm opening the rooms guys, and I see you in the next 15 minutes, okay? So you guys have fun.
school up to secondary, I, I, I realized that uh, what we are taught in school in Malaysia, or I, I would reckon in any part of the world, I wouldn't say specifically any particular country, So welcome back again. I hope you had enough time to just summarize a few points. I popped by the rooms to hear what was going on. And I was like, I wanted to stay in the room. So thank you for engaging on those conversations. Next time we have, we got to have like a whole day. So I've just placed something on the chat. So the order of presentation will be room one, room two, room three, and then room four, where you summarize the topics for discussion. So. The people you nominated to represent you, Shiv, take notes. We want to see the winning room now. So let's jump with room one. <laughs> I'm set, setting my okay. time. Okay, I'm Christine Rashid from Kenya, and I'm the rapporteur for room one. And uh, from room one, what has uh, generally come out, uh, uh, the current education systems in our country are not supporting us towards the realization of the sustainable development goals. We had Dev from Malaysia and uh, for, for him, he has, he has been through the preschool to the university level. And uh, one, uh, 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 one thing that the education system in their country is, there's the risk of concepts and ideologies, methodologies. It does not prepare one for life outside after college. And it does not teach one how to be resilient. Actually, the, it's a full of no, of uh, theories and all that, and uh, we find that a uh, fifty percent of formal ed uh, for him he was suggesting that if we could have fifty percent of formal education and fifty percent on useful tools and instruments, that will be better because you find that in school, those who are doing very well in the formal education after that are really struggling out here and uh, vice versa, those who did, did not perform well in the formal education, you find them thriving out here. So what does it mean? So formal education is not realistic and it does not contribute, contribute to the SDGs. The school does not prepare us for what to do, what next after, what next after school. Because uh, we find that we adopted the English education system, which does not work for us. And uh, same in, uh, in Uganda also, we had the same case. You find that uh, we are taught the theories and all that. So the students cram, and that is when we pass the exam. But there are some, uh, some subjects like uh, mathematics, chemistry, the sciences. You cannot cram those uh, subjects. These are subjects that one really needs to have a deeper understanding. And then implement on what you have understood out here. Uh, so that also does not help us in realization of the SDGs. And so in Kenya, personally, I went through the 844 system, which is still the same as the one in Uganda and uh, Malaysia. You'll find that uh, we had so many theories, which so are- So Christine, right you might want to, to wind up. <laughs> Thank you, two minutes okay, okay. up. Okay, same to Kenya. So the 844 system does not help us in realization of the SDGs. But currently we are having the CBC, which uh, though it's expensive due to the requirements that are needed, but you find that the CBC at least uh, is, is working toward the realization of the SDGs because the, for the CBC, it's instilling skills and technology in the children. So we hope with that we can see a change. Thanks so much. 
Christine for all those wonderful points. So let's jump to room two. Room two is my room, shift room, is it? Okay, room two. You got two minutes, I'm timing. Who's room two, please? Um, representing room two. Kamara Hussein from Ghana. So we're room two, uh, fortunately for all of us, we are able to uh, discuss something and we got to realize that uh, the countries that we were involved, our leaders are trying to uh, make uh, the education system within the various countries the best or for us to achieve the SDG goal that we are all pushing for. So we had uh, Kenya, uh, who uh, tell us your story that their education system now, the government is trying to uh, include all of them, making uh, the education system favorable for the student. Uh, they, they are now, teachers were not able to, uh, the, the barrier that was hindering them from uh, attaining quality education was teach, uh, some teachers adapting to the new curriculum that the government is bringing. <laughs> And we also have a rep from Ghana also telling us about uh, the introduction of free SHS and into the country's education system, which has employed a lot of students at a high school because of uh, lack of finance, previously affecting uh, citizens from getting uh, the quality education that they had. Then uh, we also have our sister also telling us about their education system not favoring the disabled. So that, that's one thing that has been hindering some of the citizens from getting uh, quality education. So I think that in room two, uh, we're fortunate enough to have majority of us uh, going with a yes to the question that was asked because we've realized that both countries, are uh, leaders are trying their maximum best to make the education system favorable from theory, theory, theory as we've been doing in Africa, to be able to equip the students so that when they come out from the school, uh, even if the wind up time is up, <laughs> even if the government doesn't employ them, they can do something for themselves. So group two, we went for yes. All right, thank you room two. Let's jump now to room three again, setting my timer two minutes, restarting. Off we go room, room three now. Room three, I'm just waiting and you have 30 seconds down. So I'm just watching. Beauty, uh, where is beauty? I think that's my group as well. Beauty. Yeah, beauty is okay. just, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think that the educational sector in my country had not really done much towards this achievement of the sustainable development goals because there's a lot of things we need to put in place and then focusing on the labor market. And then most of the curriculum in our educational sectors or system is adapted. So there's so many things that need to be put in place so that we can actually, which one will I use? So that we can actually be able to face the dynamics of the changing world because we can't just continue using the same method we used 20 years ago and so many things have changed. And then I discovered that my educational sector is still using the same method up to today. And that has not really helped in terms of uh, the achievement or for students to know much about the sustainable development goal. Because me, I went through the university and I told you, and I'm telling you that all through my four years in the university, I never heard anything about the sustainable development goal. It was after I graduated from the university that I was able to know a little online about the sustainable development goal that is for everyone. It's not just meant for only some certain people, it's meant for everyone. So I think that our educational curriculum should be, you know, try to, to update the educational curriculum to fit into the dynamics of the changing world. So for me, yeah, I guess that's it. Th thank you so much. That was strictly two minutes. So let me jump to room four. Thank you so much, room, room three, two, and one. So room four, I'm counting. 
setting my time. Off we go. Uh, okay, uh, I'll be representing the room four. Uh, and okay, so our our team had uh, three uh, active participants. Uh, one from Uganda and one from uh, India and me from Kenya. Uh, so uh, we had uh, two no's uh, on the question and one yes, and one yes was from uh, uh, Uganda. And uh, one of the things that he, he brought out was uh, that uh, we have the government is uh, the, uh, the government is doing uh, a lot on trying to create awareness on the sustainable development goals by creating institutions that are able to uh, uh, give uh, the youth skills uh, uh, that will that will enable them to maybe uh, create their own employment and all that. So uh, this way they. Uh, the sustainable de uh, development goals uh, is being is being achieved, and also uh, uh, he mentioned that there are some social uh, 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 there are social workers who who, uh, who, are, who are are working with uh, some of the institutions to create this awareness on the sustainable development goals. Uh, on the other hand, we uh, uh, our, partner, our partner from India, uh, she mentioned that uh, in India. Uh, 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 it is uh, there. Uh, there is no enough uh, uh, awareness uh, in India, and so uh, there is a big gap. Uh, there is also a big gap between some of the uh, urban institutions and and the rural institutions. Uh, the urban institution, yes, there there is some knowledge on the sustainable development goals, but when it comes to the rural institutions, uh, you'll, you'll find that they have no knowledge on the sustainable development goals and uh, which, uh, uh, which is the same here, here in Kenya. Uh, we have the urban, we have that gap between the urban institutions and also the rural institutions. Uh, so uh, our major call uh, to action was uh, for us, for us as individuals to try to create this awareness for us who know, who know about the sustainable development goals and also for institutions to partner with volunteering groups uh, so that they can be able to uh, have this uh, uh, knowledge on sustainable development goals uh, uh, right. transferred to, to these uh, youths and students. Thanks so uh, much, Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> so again, thanks so much, room one, room two, room three, room four, Ripa Tours, and all the members. So it's now time I welcome our second speaker to talk to us how the young people can relate um, their, uh, their career to the SDGs. And I'm, I'm just looking at my timing. We might run over like, say, 15 more minutes. But if you guys, you, you are like off to go, then still OK. But uh, following the program, we might go over by 15 minutes. So thank you again. So I will welcome now Tapiwa, our second guest, to speak to us on how we in here and those out there can link our careers to the sustainable development goals. So let me just share something about Tapiwa before he jumps on to speak to us. So Tapiwa got something here. I'm sure you guys can all read that. And you guys can see, he had something to tell us there are 1.2 billion young people aged 15 to 24 years. And this will be available so you guys can read. So I will welcome Tapiwa to speak to us. So Tapiwa, over to you. Thanks, Peter, and thanks colleagues. Apologies again for joining a bit late. Um, I think it has given me the possibility to get more information um, regarding how the young people interface with SDGs. I've been asked to talk from a policy perspective. One thing that is coming out clearly, which I'll address, is uh, the issue of um, uh, awareness, advocacy uh, young, among young people, and also about the. I mean, we when this issue again, when I joined, now I was talking about the transition from MDGs to SDGs, the issues of domestication. By domestication, I mean translation of these international uh, development frameworks into national policies and even work plans to be implemented and make them more relevant. Um, I've identified focus demand sacrifice. I'm not going to talk about every SDG. I just want to talk about those SDGs that I think are very important, are very um, key. Uh, for young people. 
uh, notwithstanding that all the SDGs, unlike the MDGs, they are, they are integrative in nature. What Navas said, multi-dimensional nature of the SDGs. They are integrated. You cannot attend to one without addressing the other. But for purposes of focus, SDG 8, decent work and economic growth, when you let it to the young people, those who are coming from universities, those who are growing up, SDG 10, to reduce inequalities, that we know has always been part of our lives, particularly the gender inequality in terms of access. And then there's something that is happening in our lives, whether you are young, whether you are old, the climate action that is needed. And then the partnerships that are needed, it's not only about money. Um, the youth, there's something now that if it's not for them or made by them, it's not something like that. Peter, you know, you are still young. So um, I think it is very important to focus on this. And also I want to, 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 to say to, to locate my discussion on the design of programs that facilitate the entry and re-entry of young people into decent jobs. These are important. Uh, when you look at the SDGs, these are internationally agreed frameworks. The major focus, the major interest that we normally have uh, issues with is how to operationalize international development frames, whether they are regional or international, but the SDG are uh, uh, international. You might recall the, uh, the MDGs. The MDGs for the first five years, it was waste of time. Why? They are not, nobody knew about them. Even what colleagues were talking about, the lack of knowledge about the SDGs, nobody knew about them. Until we moved on to something else, the millennium villages, the domestication, the localization, and so forth. Against the background, now against this background, the four SDGs that I've mentioned, um, for me, they are very critical to uh, deliver the people, the planet, and the prosperity that we, are, we, we target for the, um, for the SDGs. One, we are looking at active labor market, the context, employability skills, experience, attitudes, maturity, and focus for young people. Which SDGs are addressing this to facilitate young people? That's one. We are looking about employment, education, and training. Which SDG are, are addressing these issues? And what have uh, national governments done in order to address these issues? Then we look about the, 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 the possibilities that are given to young people from volunteering work to internship. And um, uh, if an internship be a design of, uh, of degree programs, do they, are they designed to provide young people with the necessary labor market success that we want? In most cases, no. This is where we have a major problem. This is where we are having a challenge. Young people's needs in terms of labor market success are not yet addressed, even by the current SDGs, in most cases. Young people are, are unable to, to, to acquire work-related skills and experience in the, in the education programs that they are going through. And in, um, in the same context and same breadth, the development of social capital, the social so-called networks, they are very, they are dead among young people. Um, yes, they have technology at their hands. Yes, they are able to interact. But when you do a critical analysis to, it, to what purpose most of the technology, the social um, social media and all these big uh, phones that we have in our pockets today. What are they used for? They're used to chat. Only 8% according to a recent stat study is used for networking that may provide or support career growth. The rest is chat just chatting. Even with the executive also in the same study, they get the latest iPhone, iPhone 13, but in terms of functionality, it's only used up to 2% uh, in terms of all the available functions that are on the phone. So our young people are using their, the, the technology that we have to position themselves to acquire social capital, question mark. These are the major issues that I want us to discuss. And there's also another issue. You see, at, when I went to university at the beginning of time, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not talking about Jesus, but I'm, I'm talking about the beginning of time. It was 
necessary for young people to know, understand, internalize, and reflect on what they wanted to do. These days, young people finish uh, the, the whole four-year program, the whole three-year program at university without a clue of what they want to do in life. <coughs> the issues of attitudes, issues of focus, issues of maturity, and the experience we want. And when you look at the university degrees, how many of them, if it is a four-year program, is an internship program? The, I think we all know why we want internship programs. It was one, it gives you the possibility to practice the theory that you go through on the desk. Two, it gives you the possibility that you may actually be absorbed once you finish, if you're able to impress, if you demonstrate certain attitudes, certain work ethics. The most young people that I've dealt with, they are still young. They think, oh, the sun will rise tomorrow and it will rise again the other day. Uh, why worry? I still have accommodation at my mother and my father's place, period. So the work attitude, we are not training our young people. We are not giving them the exposure. Very few have their own initiatives, but in terms of focus, we are saying it's not working. So these are the issues that I wanted Peter to, not in detail, but just to throw in. And then I hear, because when you talk, or when I give a lecture, uh, I'll talk alone. But when I sing, we sing, every, we sing with everybody and we have a chorus. I wanted to throw these as teasers so that the young people can react to my, um, one, their accusations, two, their broad statement, three, their comments that, that, that have a bearing to their attitudes, to their training, to their perceptions of, of the world around them. Then finally, on the SDGs that they think are lacking. And finally, if they, are, they have the time to see how much uh, international development uh, frameworks such as the SDGs in their own countries have been domesticated into quality education that is relevant, that can lead to decent work um, and economic growth for young people. Um, I stop here. All right. Okay, Tapiwa. Thank you so much. You brought some solid issues and that was eight minutes, 20 seconds, right on time. So for the young people, you got the attitude issue, you got the use of the phone issue, and you got the many, many things that Tapiwa have highlighted. So guests uh, and uh, maybe participants, head to the chat. I know we got Q&A coming up. React to those points starting from Nava's presentation and now to Tapiwa. And now I welcome Shiv all the way from Kuala Lumpur to speak to us about giants versus titans. So Shiv, over to you. Shiv, you are mute, I think. Okay, let me just uh, share my screen. You can hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. So Giants versus Tajin, uh, better planet through gamification. What do I mean here? Okay, let's all get on board, turn on your microphones, and let's see if we can beat the clock here, okay? It's uh, something that uh, we will try to solve a six answer question through all of us, okay? And uh, let me just get that on. And do you see this on your screen? Rapid six, what you have to do is, all of you turn your mics on, and if you know the answer, shout it out, okay? So we got six questions with six answers. Stand by, 42 seconds, you've got to beat the clock. Your first is five letters. And your hint is a country. What country is this? Kenya. 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 Okay, five more to go. Five more to go. Next one. Global Youth Forum. Well done. Okay, Youth now you've got to keep quiet, Peter. Next one. America. One, 24 seconds. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Okay. 18 seconds. Three more to go. One of the SDGs. Come on. Zero hunger. Zero hunger. Zero hunger. Zero hunger. Two more to go. Okay, I'm going to give you guys five extra seconds. Singapore, Singapore, Singapore. Singapore. Well done. One last one. Three seconds. Seven seconds. 
Kanguru. 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 Okay, basically what we saw here is an example of gamification. And so my point is using games to engage, okay? So let's go on to my next screen, uh, right? So I've set up something called Giants versus Titans. Uh, and it's all about using games to engage people, bring people together for education and sustainability, okay? So it's all about inspiring, as we say, a better planet. And uh, it's just, right. So we're going to use the GBT quiz app, and I'm proud to say that, you know, Rogers and I, we have been working on this together. So Rogers can actually run the, the GBT quiz app. And what can the application do? So it is basically an interactive quiz and poll application which I developed from first Raya. This allows you to have fun and serious quizzing with automated scoreboard. Like just now, we had a bit of fun, but we also learned about SDGs and whatnot. Huh? You can also do polls, so you can get you know, feedback polls, you can get uh, ask questions. We have time to do some of that. So it can be used in virtual platforms like we did, or in-person platforms where you actually have a session in a, in a separate training room. Huh? And basically, it delivers edge of the seat excitement through challenges. And because there's excitement, participants like it. Uh, and most of all, it makes any session impactful, measurable. Now, this is important because in learning, and also sometimes you have teachers and sometimes you have sponsors, they want numbers. So our system will get all the information and give them uh, important information as well. Huh? OK. Uh, Right, and so some of the modules we have is like A, B, C, D questions, multiple choice questions. Then we can even take text type answers. So you can have an open-ended question and you can actually type Kenya instead of A, B, or C, C is Kenya, like, you know? Then, and we can incorporate videos, pictures, music clips. So this is where there is power. In present day now, a lot of information comes through multimedia. So my system, the GBT quiz app allows you to easily program all this in. So if things like Wheel of Fortune and what we had just now, we had the rapid six shout out, okay? So things like that. And the scoring is automated and you can play with so many players online, up to 999 players, even more, okay? Uh, again, the questions are very easy to input. You just use simple text editors. Huh? So it's very easy in that regards. And you can use smartphones, okay? Like. <laughs> Um, smartphones can be bad, but they can be good as well. So you can actually engage through that. And we also have a powerful presenter built in. I'll try and show that as well, given time. Huh? And so with all of this, you can actually put in sponsors, logos, etc. So there's great potential to make your learning interesting and get sponsors and therefore pay, pay for its own use as well. Huh? I'll just show you some videos. This video where the question comes up and the team is in discussion. Let's see if you can see this video. Roughly 43 million people, huh? Okay, so did you see that video of Peter? Anyone see? Okay. Yes, we saw it. Okay, right. So that is the team when they look at the questions, they discuss with each other, and then now the, the answer comes out, okay? <laughs> Each is in a group, and when they get involved, they get excited. So there's discussion, and then there's answer. And finally, this you get to see more, I think, as well. response is coming in. Team 10, are you in? All are in. Double up. Prayer answer on your screen. Okay, so you can see how they're involved. In fact, the lecturers got involved with the teachers, uh, students. That was actually in, a, uh, in an actual university, okay? And so we've had many different challenges online since we started. In fact, this is how I got in touch with Peter as well. This is one of the first quizzes we did during the SDGs week, okay? And uh, in fact, we've done online with some local universities here, a law faculty. And you can see the, you know, the feedback has always been interesting and four and five. So we got an average of, you know, five point, almost four. And this was another session we did. We had 31 votes. This was one person who gave it a two, but the rest, you know, nines and tens. And our average score was 9.2. So the system is really engaging. Huh? Okay, tell you what, let's try. Um, we can use my a keypad. 
I tell you what, I'm, I'm going to make a decision here. I think we may not have time, so I'll just go on. Otherwise, we can actually engage you right now. So, Peter, later at the end, we want we can try this. I'm going to skip the live quiz, but come on. Okay. And this is another example of a video 3D. This is where actually young children, we went to. Okay, so you can see there it's a 3D game, but every time they give correct answers, the engine goes faster and they play it with the joystick. And this is customizable. Okay, so uh, the bottom line is makes any event interesting. You know. So this was actually some feedback, and we, we had this was the former British High Commissioner, and you can see how it says this is really good. You know, so people at different high levels as well, and, and we got these devices we use. So even medical societies have used it. There's actually people taking part and buzzing in answers. Huh? So you can see the feedback is the quiz is, people say, well, quiz is not good, but the way it's done with the engagement, the scoring, it makes things interesting. Huh? So you can even have questions coming out on the, on the screen, on your handphones, and you type answers. Huh? So these examples, FOIA, if you have a university, you take part in the quiz and whatnot, huh? so as I mentioned. So we've done this in, in, in many in, you know, low cost areas to educate and empower. And from their faces, you can see how they really get engaged. Huh? And we can even do a lucky kind of thing where people come and play online head to head. And this is live cast, so everyone in the world can see them take part against each other. You know? So that's, uh, this is an example of a quiz that we did for seven years ago in Malaysia. It's called Mighty Minds, and we work with the national newspaper here. And students actually all come in the morning on a Saturday morning. And by the time they finish, by 5 p.m., we crown the state champions. Huh? And we've got something else called uh, 3D. Now, this is 24-7 game. Huh? That means you can actually play uh, 24 hours anytime you, you want. You go on and you take part in 3D dungeons as well. Huh? So bottom line, what I'm saying is sky is the limit what you can do with the quiz app. And uh, I want to work with the Global Youth Forum together. Let's make a better planet. So all of you, you can actually sign up, or go to gbt.la and you can sign up for an avatar. So get an avatar for yourself, call yourself giant man or whatever and do that. And finally, as mentioned, uh, we actually have produced this. Uh, you know, there are 169 uh, targets from the 17 goals. So with this, let's just go directly there. You can actually even search for keywords. Okay, let me just show that. So we go to gbt.la, the SDG targets. So far, we have 139 views. So I want to go for, okay, sustainable communities and cities. I click there, and you can see this is the first target. Ensure access to all adequate safe housing, okay? I come back, and then I'll go to, so let's say now I want to search for something. I click here, and I can say uh, by 2020. So I'm putting 2020. And how many of the 169 targets have the word 2020? So 21 targets are there, okay? So SDG number two, zero hunger. By 2020, maintain genetic diversity. Uh, good health and well-being, okay? By 2020. So this is a search engine, and together with Global Youth Forum, I guess we can all try and use this tool, sir. With that, I'd like to say thank you, and if you have uh, any questions, uh, I, I can take them now. Feel free to reach me here. With that, Peter, I'm done. Thank you. All right. Uh, what I loved the most, I was keen on the how I was engaged and I was doing like that the initial part. And that's the, uh, the point of uh, when, when it comes to talk about games. And I love games. Purely I do football and all that. So what we are going to do next, we are going to spend, say, the next seven minutes or six minutes. Let's, let's do five. I will welcome questions. Either you just unmute and just talk, ask, direct it to, to Shiv, yep. or you yep. can direct it to Nava, or- Yeah, Peter, you... if I can just- uh, Yeah, go I'm on. Sorry to interrupt, but I have here with me Dave, uh, yeah, Dave is put on. So Dave is basically working with me as well, and he's got a very good program called Meraki, which is Mind, Emotions, and Actions, okay? So uh, Dave, we don't have too much time here, but the idea is you can just tell us and how Dave can help us as well to empower our youth using these soft skills. Dave, uh, uh, you got a 30 seconds? 
Yeah, I can. I, I just a, uh, a short brief. Yeah, we're not do justice to this. Thank you, Siva and Peter, everyone. Okay, Meraki is a transformational science program uh, that I've created over a period of time in my experience as a solicitor, a lawyer, as well in business life and and, and all the experience that I've had. Um, this basically prepares an individual at different phases of life, whether it's a student or a young entrepreneur or a uh, 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 experienced businessman, how do you actually face the world when you have challenges coming on to you? How do you how do you prepare yourself to be resilient mentally? How do you actually uh, 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 create focus and concentration on your goal and your vision and your ambition? Everybody says concentrate. Everybody says uh, uh, focus in your studies, but nobody says uh, tells you how to do it. So there's a methodology process. And there are tools that I teach in order for someone to actually focus themselves towards their intended goal. And then emotions, we always get uh, challenges emotionally. Even though we are focused, we have challenges emotionally coming in to disturb us. So how do you orient it, your emotion in such a way that all point of time that you are on a positive note? And then how do you take result-driven action, not only action but result driven action in pursuit of your goal this is a two or three days of full uh, energy empowered and um experiential workshop once a person goes through this and he practices that for 21 days he or she it becomes a habit and then they can employ this in their everyday life this is what is very important that we should teach youngsters apart from the formal education this gives them empowers them to actually deal with the world when we go into outside okay, world, i think yes i think we yeah. are short of time as well yeah sure you get the picture and then you know we will take this up with peter separately yeah i just want to thank you thank you so much for the time all right so dev i must say thank you and shiv thanks for bringing dev on board and I know guys will appreciate this. So I think our next event, Dave, I got something for you so we can speak and probably you can be part of our next event. Time was so short. So thank you again. So Tapiwa, Shiv, and Nava, and probably Dave, that's why I've pinned all of them. So anyone with any question we can do because of the timing, we can do three more minutes and then we, we just wind up. Anyone with any question? I'm just, I'm seeing people looking at me and I'm just tempted to pick somebody. Uh, I want to pick somebody who is so passionate about education here. I was looking at the data. Birigigi, because your camera is on, do you have any question? <laughs> Unmute if you want. I, I thought you had not seen me. I, I thought you were going to choose Rogers because I'm seeing Rogers is also there. So, I'm but, coming. Uh, yeah. Uh, my my question maybe goes to Shiv. Uh, in terms of, uh, I see most of these things that we uh, the people, our presenters are coming to show us. To some of us, they are even new. And uh, I wanted you to find out from. How do you help us to borrow you from wherever you are to our young people down here, such that we we get uh, it, it can be a very big contribution if we borrow the some knowledge from you on how you're doing the education to my country, Uganda. Thank you. Okay, good question. And in fact, uh, this is exact. I you can hear me right. Yes. So the answer to that would have been about three years ago, you know, for me to fly to Uganda. But thankfully, um, um, you know, I was actually doing this before the pandemic came online as well with people. But because now with the pandemic, uh, more and more people are using online connection tools, uh, virtual tools. So things like Zoom and Meets and all that. So with that, from my room here, I can actually teach you how to use it. We can install the system. On, on your laptop. So Rogers is some uh, someone I've worked with this last uh, few weeks. And so we have worked with, uh, Rogers can actually run the quiz himself. And so we are now embarking on teaching all of you as well, how to run your own quiz, put in your own content, you know? So we'll be happy to follow up with you, Brigigi. Huh? So um, the idea is with the internet and with Zoom and all that, I can easily install on your laptop, we can run it, or sometimes, 
we can run it for you. You just give us the questions and, you know, so there are many ways of doing it, you know. So, Rogers, that is something you're going to start doing, okay, Rogers? All right. Okay, so what we will do, because of the timing, so anyone in this room, I'm going to ask you to probably send us separate questions, and obviously there is a link we will share with you so you guys can give us the feedback, and probably we will direct them either to Tapiwa, Nava, or Shiv. And obviously our role is to connect you to our guests and probably be part of them and just do explore collaboration corners. So can you guys see the Q and A slide on my uh, on my screen or on your screen? Okay, good. So I wanted to just give a quick shout out. I know we got partners who joined us to make this event a success. So I'm just like, we, we will get your question and submit them to our guests. So for the Jawabu, for communities, she's not here with us. She's held somewhere, so she did send her greetings. And obviously, first tray, you've seen the games, and first tray also donated to our uh, end game of establishing archery this year. So thanks, Chief, for that. And the slick girls, Fatima, are you in the house to give us a word or two? All right, youth adventures. Obviously, I'm, I'm in a corner right here, just like looking to. Uh, work we do in terms of empowering you with the life skills and bringing partners to work with us. Royalty dishes, she might have left and she does something with the food. So to all the partners, big shout out to you all and we look forward to working with you in the next event. So looking at, at this one, we did set goals guys. We did set goals for this event and I want you to clearly have a quick look at this. I will just give you a quick point. When we said we were going only to raise 4,000 for this particular, no, we, we said we were going to reach 40 young people with this SDG information. Some of us went out and in two schools, we, we, we spoke to 320 and today 22 people turned up for this event. You can imagine how much impact we have made. And if we continue this throughout the year, we also set a target of raising, raising say 4,000. Look how much we have raised and Damini just escaped to work. But imagine we have raised over 13,000 Kenya shillings to go with our vision, uh, like our long-term goal. So this, those clearly indicate that when young people have focus, and I know Tapiwa touched on it, if you know exactly what you want, you will find and you will go out there to meet people who will support you. So we wanted just to share that with you. So this is now the action part. Each and every person who took part on this particular challenge, you can earn that certificate. And the conditions for earning this certificate, it's about taking action. And the actions you guys can take, you can go plant a tree, you can identify a goal and mobilize few friends who are passionate about the goal or their goals and work with them to enlighten other people. Or this year, we want to set an archery for SDGs. You want to use archery to promote the sustainable development goals. So you can donate probably if you like to watch the Achari project and support our community and sports center. And if you do all this and complete the feedback form, uh, the feedback form you, uh, to do this, it can take time. But if you complete all those assignments and complete the feedback form that we will share with you the link, then you can earn that certificate and you can go out and tell people, look, you guys can take part on this. Next month, I know I'm going, I saw Dave. Dave, thanks for coming. We got you covered. We got one partner in the house. So I'm only going to look for two more. So thanks, thanks you for bringing Dave on board. So we are going to look at the, the goal setting for the young people. How can you set goals? And then Shiv can also give us tools. Nava also have shared with us some things. So that's our next event. But purely this is a paid event, but we'll give you, young people will give you scholarship and sponsorship to be part of this. Because sometimes they say if you give people free stuff, they won't appreciate it. They will just run away and they won't take it seriously. So for those of you wondering where to find us, I know she got first tray. I will send you the link so you guys can join in. And for us, those are our social media handles and you guys can find us. I know today, guys, we've been informed, but being informed alone, uh, can just make us move and make, can just do, do us like a little bit. But if we go out there and take actions and report back and mobilize friends to also take actions, then we can be, uh, we can create a better world in terms of uh, realizing our dream. So I will choose one volunteer, uh, one participant, and then I'll choose one guest to give us the closing remarks. So 
anyone volunteer jump on and give us a closing remark so let me start with a with a participant and then the guest uh, to give us uh closing remarks so who who is going to give us the closing remarks from the side of volunteers let me see who haven't spoken in the room fatima are you here parnika anyone one minute Okay, so seems like my participants are like shy. Rogers, jump on and give us the closing remarks. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you, Peter. Uh, okay, uh, I think the the event has been very successful, and I think uh, to all the volunteers that joined us for this event, uh, I hope there is a uh, one or two things that you've learned, and also thank you for uh, taking time to participate in this uh, in this event. I would also like to thank our partners and uh, all those who assisted uh, in making this event successful. Just want to appreciate uh, and say thank you, and also for uh, the for the things that we've launched today we on sustainable development goals we've had people from various countries and we've got to learn uh, about uh, what they do in their country on in terms of creating uh, awareness on the sustainable development goals and uh, just to i don't know maybe what uh, peter said it's all about uh, uh, taking some action after this, and uh, I believe that uh, we will be doing uh, some great work ahead. And also, uh, in, in terms of uh, working with Shiv, and uh, Shiv has been very uh, uh, cooperative and understanding, and I think I've learned a lot from him through the gamification platform, and I believe that it is something that can help uh, in terms of uh, uh, most of the events uh, at Global Youth Forum and also uh, in creating uh, awareness in, uh, on sustainable development goals. So I believe that it is a very good project coming up and I'm very happy to be part of it. Uh, and I believe that uh, together as we work uh, as one, we will be able to achieve our goals. Uh, thank you, Peter. Thanks so much, Rogers. Just to mention something about Rogers. Rogers was our volunteer of the year in 2021. And it was, we were three of us who made it to the end. So you can imagine how life can be interesting. So you guys, if you are volunteer in here, you guys can always get people to hold your hands and to give you a hand. So I will pick Nava because Nava have been quiet in a corner. So Nava, jump on and give us some closing remarks. Thank you. All right, thanks, Peter. Um, I think um, in terms of all the, uh, it was it was very interesting to hear all the insights that were shared today. Primarily, the underlying thing is that you know, regardless of the countries that we are from, there is some work in our education system that enables us to to realize the SDGs. But there's definitely more work that needs to be done. Uh, as youth, um, we have a huge part to play in realizing the SDGs, and that is in taking action. Right. So regardless of how you do it. Uh, the most important part is that you do something. Um, so I hope that you continue to use your voice uh, to get yourself and other decision makers to create, uh, create the future that we want. All right, so that marks the end of our session. So next time I will do one hour, 30 minutes so that we have more time to engage. So I will say thank you so much for creating time. I will just post the recording so you guys, if you like to engage more then you guys can engage. So yeah. maybe Nava, maybe she... you can. Yeah, so maybe you can have a group photo. Good, good eyes, Rogers. That's why that's why you are in the room. So thank you so much. So group photo. Who is taking that? So probably let's find who has been in the room. So let's turn our cameras on. Um, yeah, thank you. Thanks, Tapiwa. Finally, we saw your face. Thanks, Muihaki. Nice to see you. Parnika, nice to see you. I love your hoodie. It looks nice. Hussein, you seem to be going for the presidency of your country. Looks nice. Said, Bernard, beauty. Beauty, can we see that beautiful face if it's there? Kipruto, let's see it. Let's see your face. Fatma, nice to see you. So who is our photographer today? I don't know how to do, I don't do photos. Who's done the photos for us? Yeah. All right, I can take a screenshot. 
Okay, good. I'll count everyone down, all right? So look at your cameras. And one, two, three. All right. All right. Good. I'll just take one more for good measure. All right, just one more smile. One, two, three. All right. Thank so I you. Must say, I must say 